Hi, I'm Sundata, yet Villarreal Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction System Integration and Architecture Series. Today is our lecture number 4. Now let's proceed to our topic for today. Okay, it is a continuation of the overview of system integration challenges and drives part 3. Evolution of ERP in the timeline in the 1960s, system having its inventory management and control. And the platform is the mainframe legacy system using third generation software such as COBOL and Fortran. In 1970s, under system material requirements planning, MRP, and they have the platform of mainframe legacy system using third generation software, COBOL and Fortran. And in 1980s, under its system, material requirements planning MRP2, which has a platform of mainframe legacy system using fourth generation database software and manufacturing application. It is very clear here that in 1980s, they use only the first database software, but we didn't know what kind of software is this. Now in 1990s, under its system, Enterprise R Resource Planning, the ERP itself. In 1990s, ERP is the first implementation because Material Requirements Planning is not ERP. But they have the origin which is the resource planning. So under the platform, Mainframe Client Server System using 4th generation database software and package software. Because Enterprise Resource Planning is also a package software such as the Office application and they mentioned on the last video that it's very different and I'm telling you it is similar okay because that is the origin also of the ERP before in 1990s which we have the office application already next in year 2000 extended ERP or ERP2 under its system and in platform, client server system using web platform, open source with integration to fifth generation application like SEM, CRM, and SFA. So these are considered to be legacy system which is used in the network or the internet. Now, eBusiness and ERP under eBusiness focuses on linking a business with its external partners and stakeholders and in ERP focuses on integrating the internal functional silos of the organization into an enterprise application. It means to say when we said silos it is the employee. Now in e-business disruptive technology totally transformed the way a business operates in terms of buying and selling customer service and relationship with supplier and under ERP adaptive technology merged early data processing and integration efforts within an organization so this picture is considered to be the first integration so we have the ERP enterprise resource planning with the uh, internal process goal integration and efficiency and we have e-business it's electronic business external process goal integration and effectiveness efficiency is time effectiveness is the accuracy we have merge right here at the center which is business strategy alignment next we have ERP system components an ERP system consists of hardware software information process and people so under database it is mentioned hardware software data process and people but in ERP system components we have hardware software process information process and people so under hardware we have servers and peripherals software process operating system and database information organizational data from internal and external sources process business process procedures and policies people and user and IT stuff and we have picture right here under its software it is connected to database because we install this software is considered to be an operating system so we connect the database or we install in the software the people look at the operating system to use database and server the company processes the software it can be possible that it is an online so it will be on a real-time situation next ERP architecture the architecture of an ERP system influences the cost maintenance and the use of the system the ERP architecture helps the implementation team build the ERP system for the organization 
If purchased, ERP architecture is often driven by the vendor, package-driven architecture. There are two types of architecture, logical focuses and physical focuses. The logical focuses on the supporting needs of the end user. The physical focuses on the efficiency of the system. Now we have here the logical architecture of an ERP system. And I think you need to memorize this because the subject is system integration and architecture. So the logical is considered to be the hardware, the data, core business logic security access, the functional business application, and we have the production, marketing, HRM, finance, distribution, supply chain, accounting, and it goes to the client user interface application and the end user. The hardware itself identifying it is all considered to be a mainframe, okay, that all of the department can get data. Next, we have the tired architecture example of ERP system. So when we said tired, it is connected like wired network. We have here tired architecture example of ERP system. So the first on the top is the client and it represents three parts, presentation logic tire, business logic tire, and data tire. Under presentation logic tire, we have remote user client, integration server, load balancing web server, Citrix server farm. And under the business logic tire, we have load balancing, application servers, batch server, print servers. And the data tire, we have production database server, reporting database server, this database server. Now the system benefit of an ERP system. Integration of data and application across functional areas. Example, data can be entered once and used by all application. Thus improving accuracy and quality of the data. Improvements in maintenance and support of as IT staff is centralized. Consistency of the user interface across various application means less employee training, better productivity, and cross-functional job movements. Security of data and application is enhanced due to a better control and centralization of hardware. Now let's move on to the system limitation of an ERP system. Complexity of installing, configuring, and main maintaining. maintaining the system increases. Thus required specialized IT staff, hardware, and network facilities. Consolidation of IT hardware, software, and people resources can be cumbersome or difficult to attain. Data conversion and transformation from an old system to a new one can be tedious and complex process. Retraining of IT staff and end user of the new system can produce resistance and reduce productivity. Now, business benefit of an ERP system. Agility of the organization in terms of responding to changes in environment for growth and maintaining market share. Sharing of information across functional areas helps collaboration between employees. Linking and exchanging information in real time with supply chain partners. Improve efficiency leading to lower costs. Better customer service due to the quicker information flow across departments. Efficiency of business processes are enhanced due to the re-engineering re of business processes. Business limitations of an ERP system. Retraining of all employees with the new system can be costly and time-consuming. That's why we need to study on information technology education. The second one is change of business roles and department boundaries can create upheaval and resistance to the new system. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and good luck. Congratulations, successfully finished our lecture number 4.